from an Advaitic point of view, there is freedom, not free will. Free will is a contradiction in terms. The moment you speak about will, will is always caused. And anything that is caused is determined, is determined already determined. So the point is that we seem to have free will. We feel that we have free will. Whether I will raise my hand or not right now, it seems to be it's my choice. Here, I have chosen. Here, I raised the hand. But really, have I chosen? That thought that I will raise the hand, it bubbled up from somewhere deep inside my subconscious. Wasn't it also caused? If you put it under the scanner, you will see that there was some neurological activity, neuronal activity which preceded my decision taking. And, it, and I have already talked about the Benjamin Libet experiments, you know, where uh, they seem to show that there is neuronal activity which our, even our so-called free will choices seem to be caused. Neuroscience, then philosophy, um, spirituality, the great spiritual masters, they all seem to say that it's God's will alone. Thy will be done. It's God's will which is working through everything, not ours. Not I, my Lord, but, but thou. So science, um, science says everything, it's a deterministic universe, cause and effect. Um, though I don't understand quantum mechanics so much, they say that quantum mechanics introduces a chance element there, an indeterminacy in this so-called strictly deterministic universe. Anyway, and um, philosophy, neuroscience, science, uh, that means physics, um, then your um, spirituality. All of them say that, they seem to be saying that your feeling of free will is an illusion. It seems to be, but it is not actually. And going beyond all of this, Advaita says, finally, there is freedom. You as Atman, you are free. But as a limited individual being, you do not have free will. So what, putting it all together, what does it come to? Uh, here I'm drawing upon Arindam, Professor Arindam Chakravarti's article, which I mentioned earlier. He says, putting these three together. What are the three? We seem to have free will. Upon examination... By, sci by physics, neuroscience, um, philosophy, uh, spirituality, upon examination, it seems that we have no free will. And finally, the truth is ultimately we are free, though not free will. If you put these three together, what do you get? What you get is the wisest way of living, wisest way of using this appearance of free will is to... Um, surrender to the Lord That I freely choose to surrender to the Lord It is God's will That freely acknowledging that You see both things are there I am using my appearance of free will At the same time acknowledging that it is a God's will so That is called surrender It's a very beautiful resolution of this paradox I have never found it anywhere else the Professor Arindam Chakravarti does that Did I direct I, You asked a question whether it is this feeling of free will here, is it, um, is it deterministic or is it indeterminate, you're saying? Mm, that's right. Indeterminate would be, philosophically speaking, a more acceptable answer. Mm. Deterministic also doesn't seem to be quite right because we have a strong feeling that it is not deterministic. Science says it has to be deterministic, at least at the, at the Newtonian level or something. Um, so I guess indeterministic... Because, uh, yeah. Brahman's intent is indeterminable. Brahman, Saguna Brahman's intent is indeterminable because Nirguna Brahman, the Absolute, has no intent. The Absolute just is. In the Buddhist term, Tathata, suchness, that has no intent. But when you come to what you're saying, intent, that is at the level of the theistic God, which is in Vedanta, Saguna Brahman, Ishvara. Oh, by the way, there is one free will in this entire universe. If you believe in religion, in God, in theistic religion, then God in every system has free will. God is free to do whatever he, she, it wants to do. But we are dependent on God. 